Hello and welcome back to my series Journey to Jewel episode 5 where we are going to land and on Tylo and hopefully return to our spacecraft the Julishka where the lander currently is being tugged out of the cargo bay using my small space tug. The reason I'm using that tug is so I have some additional RCS modules uh, to compensate for the additional weight of the extra Tylo descent stage and also so I don't use up the monopropellant inside of the lander. And here's the tug heading back home into the safe harbor of the cargo bay. Meanwhile, we're switching back to the lander, and since we're close to periaps, we're immediately, immediately beginning with our deorbit burn. The big engine lighting up, and our velocity is sinking, and our altitude, of course, is sinking as well. I'm using three stages for this lander. First stage fires the engine and drains uh, the radial tanks, then those get dropped, and then the entire stage with the big Rockomax tank and the engine gets dropped, and the proper lander continues on his four small tiny engines. And here we're getting close to stage separation. Ready to dump the tanks now. And of course the reason I'm doing that is so I can reduce my weight, which increases the thrust to weight ratio, which of course gets my descent done more efficiently. And here I realized that I forgot to scrub the materials bay. So of course I had to reload and scrub the materials bay uh, for in the, well, using the science lab inside the big spacecraft and do all of that again. As you've seen before, burning the first stage, then dropping the radial tanks, continuing on the rest uh, of the fuel in the Rockamax tank and then that will be dropped as well. Of course all experiments are now ready to be deployed and Dumo Kerman looking on in excitement as his vehicle descends on Tylo, the magnificent biggest moon of the Jewel planetary system. And here we are getting them closer and closer to the surface trying to match our rate of descent with the velocity and here we're going slower and slower but you know here you really have to balance how fast you descend and how much fuel you burn so you don't spend too much delta v and of course if you're using the SES system like I did uh, right now to set it to retrograde burn uh, if you get below a certain vertical velocity, it kind of switches around and your entire lander gets messed up. And touchdown! We did it! We landed on Tylo safely, with probably enough delta V to spare to get back into a safe orbit. But for now, it's time to do some science. First of all, we activate all of the experiments on the outside of the lander and then of course Dumor Kerman will do his duty as a brave Kerbal astronaut and gather some surface samples and an EVA report from the surface. But of course, first we have to plant a flag to commemorate the occasion that we have visited Tylo on the first step of our Jewel mission where we, of course, want to visit every moon of the Jewel system. Getting back up to the lander. And we're ready to ascend again. There we go. For some reason that uh, lander is kind of nose heavy, it, it tries to t pitch down for some reason. I haven't figured out yet why, but it's easy to compensate. And there wouldn't be any challenge in it if there weren't some kind of small quirks to the spacecraft. 
should be around two and a half uh, thousand meters per second delta V to get back into orbit, depending on uh, how high your liftoff uh, altitude actually is. We now have quite a fi uh, fine apoapse and we should have enough fuel to spare to make our circularization burn. There we go. And we're safe. Yes, we managed a Tylo landing and return and now we can gloriously uh, gather our science experiments. Of course, that. Uh, Atmospheric analysis does not help us here, but we still have some data in there from our error braking maneuver at Joule, so let's get that as well. And here you see me faffing about with uh, a rendezvous, trying to get the big mothership back to the lander, of course, because the big rocket has more fuel to spare than the lander, and I don't want to get the lander stranded. Doing my usual Kerbal Alarm Truck trick by getting back to the space center and let time pass at a faster rate. And we're close to an encounter with the lander. And of course, since the big ship is harder to control and we're in such close proximity, we can switch back to the lander and get back into the cargo bay. There we go. Almost safe, almost inside. Of course, even now, even if uh, the monopropellant would fail now in uh, the lander vehicle, I have my small tug which can get it back in. So there is some level of redundancy. And getting the big craft lined up so the lander does not have to do that uh, much work. Activating the dock alignment indicator, which is such a useful tool, I can't stress that enough. It should have been in the regular game because it makes docking so much more easier, especially if you're not as good as some people aligning objects in three dimensional space so they can actually fit together. And we're back in, and we're Docked. Yes, the Tylo part of our dual mission is a success. And we can f now uh, gather up all the experiments that we've stored and get them into our science lab. And of course we have to switch crews because by the rules of the Jewel 5 challenge uh, there has to be a different pilot that lands on each of the Jewel moons. And of course, since Doomer Kerman has already done Tylo, he can rest for the rest of the journey. And now we just move some science we still had in the command module and get it back to the science lab. For some reason I started processing the uh, experiments, but that would not be, uh, have been necessary because I never planned to transmit them anyway. Now time to go to lathe, and for that we set up some new maneuver nodes and then try to get into sphere of influence of lathe, the innermost moon of Jewel, and of course the only a planetary body inside the Kerbal system that actually contains a breathable atmosphere. And before we can start that journey we have to refuel the lander which is a tedious process with bearable, made bearable by the magic of time acceleration. So here we are ready to go to encounter Lathe, just a few orbits, and we activate our mighty nuclear engines. Well, let's hope all those Kerbal uh, spacesuits are radiation shielded so they get back home in, well, not just one, well, in just one piece and not many more pieces. 
And we got out of the influence of Tyler and we're setting up our lathe encounter. Should be looking good, but as you may have seen in one of my previous episodes, some encounters never stay the same. Regardless, we now have almost gotten our encounter. And here we are, inside the sphere of influence of Lathe. Now it's time to do some science in high orbit above Lathe, so we can get each and every possible science point available. Of course, for that, our brave Kobrel has to uh, get the data from all of the experiments, which means some more EVA action, and of course, once more, the drawback of my lander design, where just materials bay is hidden. Well, not really hidden, but part of the main structure of the lander. And here we try again. Of course, my the lack of skill on my behalf letting us down. But we managed to get the data from the materials bay and head back down inside the cargo bay to collect the mystery goo data. And we now get ready to prepare for our landing on lathe in the next episode.